There's been a lot of interest in non-alcoholic cocktails and drinks lately, or at least I assume there has been based on the comments I get on my videos. There's a whole market segment these days with lots and lots of no ABV spirits that you can buy now. But are they any good? What can you do with them? I genuinely don't know, which is why I'm gonna start doing some episodes where I just take a look at these things, taste them, see what I can mix up with them, maybe help you find one that fits your needs best. There is way too much of this stuff out there on the market for me to do all the no ABV stuff in a single episode. So I'm gonna start with what I think is a pretty popular brand and look at the lineup from Seedlip today. <laughs> Uh, first things first, Seedlip is 100% not sponsoring this episode. I bought these bottles myself. They have been collecting dust on my shelves for a bit while I think about how to approach this whole subject. With that out of the way, what the heck is this stuff? Well, I checked out their website. Lots and lots of words there. <laughs> Long story short, this guy in the UK named Ben Branson founded the company supposedly after reading The Art of Distillation, a book from 1651. According to their site, the process behind creating each of these bottles involves individual maceration and then distillation of specific botanicals and herbs. Then each final product is a blend of those individual distillates, right? I know you're thinking distillation, or maybe you're thinking distillation, but without fermentation, there's no alcohol. So if you ferment something and then distill it, you take the water away, you concentrate the potency of the alcohol. Well, if you don't ferment it, there's no alcohol to begin with. So you can distill it to clarify it, to purify it, to remove impure things, solids, whatever. There's a lot of reasons why you would distill it. I don't know exactly what their purpose is there. It might just be so they can say it's distilled, to be perfectly honest. It certainly yields a crystal clear, shelf-stable infused water. So maybe that's what the point is. So basically, there's no alcohol to concentrate. These are therefore zero ABV. They have no alcohol. They offer three bottles, Garden 108, Grow 42 and Spice 94. I actually don't know what those numbers mean. I couldn't find it on their website, but then again, I guess I didn't look all that hard. So maybe it's on there and you'll point it out to me. It is worth pointing out that unlike some other no ABV spirit makers, Seedlip isn't trying to replicate gin or whiskey or any existing spirit with their products. The idea here is that these are wholly unique things that can't or shouldn't be compared to anything else. Okay. They also say that they don't recommend drinking them neat at all, although I will be doing that anyway in a moment. And they strongly encourage you to mix them with club soda, tonic, or ginger ale at a minimum. And I will try that as well. They've got a large list of cocktails to make with these on their website. Um, I will tell you that I will make those in this episode. None of the really complicated ones. Uh, and in fact, here is a Grove Margarita that I just made at the end of the episode and now I'm doing a new opening. And I won't tell you how it is until you get to that part of the episode, but I will hold it in my hand as a prop and maybe have a sip from it. Is it good? Is it bad? I won't tell you. You'll have to wait till later in the episode. Get over it. I will get to an example of each of these having a simple cocktail. One thing I noticed though, is that the cocktails that they list on their site are frequently dependent on really strong flavored ingredients and like specialist stuff. I want to avoid those because I'm really interested in seed lip itself and burying it with like a watermelon rhubarb shrub or something kind of defeats my purpose here. I think at this point I should just get on with it and try these things and see how they are. But first, message from this episode's sponsor. I love coffee and can't really seem to get enough of the stuff, so thank you, Trade, for sponsoring this episode and feeding my need for coffee. Trade helps you discover new coffee from the nation's best coffee roasters by matching you to your own personal selection and delivering it right to your door, which is good for me because before Trade, it seems like I was always forgetting to swing by my roasters and pick up new coffee before I ran out which led to some very hectic and unpleasant mornings, as you can imagine. They've got a very simple three-step process to make this happen. First, get over to their website and answer a very short quiz about what things you like in a coffee. Then, choose when you want that coffee to arrive and how often. And finally, when that coffee shows up, tell them how you liked it. They guarantee that first shipment, so if you don't like it, they'll send you something else for free. Right now, I'm sipping this Guatemala Concepcion Huista Fair Trade Organic from Equator Coffees. Mm. It does have this kind of caramel vibe, like an overdone caramel vibe that rounds out through a slight perception of sweetness to a mildly acidic finish. It's a damn fine coffee. So here's the deal. The first 100 HTD viewers to click the link below and sign up, we're gonna get 50% off their first bag. Just click the link, take the quiz, use code How to Drink 50 when you do it. Shipping is free. All right, back to the show. So let's start with Garden 108, what the heck? Um, I have tasted these just briefly. I mean, like I opened them up a little while ago and 
poured some out and tasted it. So here we're doing the thing we're not supposed to do. We'll have some Garden 108 meat. Woo, it has a really powerful aroma. And I don't hate that. It does smell like a garden. I mean, it smells like, I was gonna say cucumbers, but it just, it, honestly, it smells like, you know, like that smell of the pile of weeds after you've been weeding in the garden and you've got all the, the ripped flesh of the weeds. The ripped flesh of the weeds. What in the, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> all right. I can definitely get some pepper notes in the nose. It's not unpleasant. I like that. It's complicated, actually. Let me try that again. It, lime was the first thing I detected. I got lime. I don't know if that's actually what's in it, but I got lime. It's grassy, um, vegetal. There's some peppery notes, like peppercorn. Very clean mouthfeel. It has a tart, lime, peppery flavor. Interesting. What do we do? Should we do masking the void? Let's just do this with the club soda, too. Make some soda using my drink mate real quick. I've been chilling this water, so it should make for a very nice carbonated water. If this was a real wet bar, I'd probably want to install like an actual soda gun, but this is fine. You know, it is leaving kind of a lingering burning sensation, honestly, like a peppery, like a spicy peppery. I'm pretty much a pepper wimp. I mean, honestly, you could tell me, if you told me that that was like bell pepper, the effect of bell peppers, um, it's mild burning, I should say, too. Not like hot spicy, but like, oh yeah, I detect that. I would believe you if you told me that was bell peppers or something like that. So I done goofed. Um, I don't actually have a jigger. We'll just use this glass, which is, uh, I think, four ounces. Uh, I was actually planning to do a four to one ratio for the seltzer, so. I'll actually go, th yeah, right? Three to one. Three of these. And then the seed loaf. That'll work. Yeah. Pricey stuff, too. I don't have the, um, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you what the MSRP is. It says it right there on screen. Ah, it is. It's a tough one, right? I don't know. For something that's got no alcohol in it. I understand there's craftsmanship in it and everything like that, but there's also no aging process. <laughs> so, can you justify that? I don't know. Kind of like cucumber. A cucumber club soda is what you get when you put it like that. It's nice, but I'm not exaggerating when I tell you you would get the exact same results by slicing up some cucumber and throwing it in club soda. Um, maybe some celery. Now I'm getting some celery. Um, and if you were not afraid of trace amounts of alcohol, some celery bitters would not be a bad choice to replicate that with some club cucumber and celery bitters. It's refreshing. It is nice. It tastes like cucumber and club soda. It has a very, um, there's not a lot in there. Maybe a little grassy, a little, little yeah, a little grassy too. Oh, this glass was dusty. Ugh. Oops. I'm genuinely thirsty though, so it's nice to know that I can really guzzle this and not like get myself sauced. And that is valid. Certainly when pandemics are over, if you're hosting guests and you've got people who you know are designated drivers um, and whom, or who are simply not drinking, what a thoughtful thing to provide, you know? And certainly that would, that's very nice. It's ex excellent hosting to offer seed lip, you know, not like, not just like a, a homemade ginger beer or something like that, which I think is also a really nice thing to offer. By the way, a lot of my favorite bars, that's what they used to do. Um, like, uh, I think employees only for designated drivers, you get a nice ginger beer. It's nice. Is it great? I don't know. So they recommend this, a garden tonic. I'll grab some tonic and we'll try that. What the heck? I got a jigger now and a can of bottle opener. Great. Perfect. So. Let's do, you know, four ounces of tonic. I guess I could have eyeballed this, but whatever. Two ounces of seed lip. So this is a seed lip, a garden tonic, garden tonic they call this. Not the biggest gin and tonic fan. Huh. The seed lip is definitely present. I mean, tonic is a pretty dominant flavor. And the seed lip isn't disappearing here. So I think that's a win. It's a bad test because I didn't put it over ice, but I'm trying to extrapolate like this was ice cold on cracked ice on a summer day. Yeah, I think I would like this. I think for me, it's missing, and I don't want to say alcohol, but it's missing a little bit of flavor that I want it to have. That's not the alcohol, but I think that if you're okay with it, I think a couple, of, I'm just thinking that a couple dashes of mango 
in that. It's actually, I got a, that dasher top is fucked. <laughs> it was a lot more than a couple dashers. I have a funny feeling that this will be more to my liking. Ooh, I like that. That, see now that I love. You know why? It's because this in particular, and it's fine. It's just the way it's meant to be. It's missing just some kind of um, root. It's, it's very leafy is the best way to describe it. It's a garden, but it's very leafy. Whereas that brings in some root flavors, if that makes any sense. It's a little bit more, and some more spice, some cinnamon and stuff like that. Now, that said, they call this one Spice 94. When we get to that, I probably will think that this is more, this might be more my speed. This makes for an interesting garden tonic. It does. I think that the lime would have been nice too. Of course, now I've changed the drink fundamentally. I was just looking at that Angus store and thinking, it's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. And it is good. But I would probably like tonic in Angus store too, you know. <laughs> Well, I don't have much of it. I mean, it is what it is, right? You know, but flavor-wise, it's present, and I think you can work with it. The fact that it doesn't disappear in tonic says a lot. That, to me, says a lot. That this is a, um, a substantial flavor that can be worked with. I mean, I, I think that to the extent that you could look at existing cocktails for inspiration, look to gin-based cocktails, but this will not replace gin. It does not taste like gin. It has no juniper in it. They'll even say that on their website. It exists in a similar flavor space, if that makes any sense. Let's just move down the line and we'll do, look at Spice 94 and uh, pour myself a little neat taste, even though they say don't do that. That's tough for them. Some cinnamon in there, but it takes a second to register as cinnamon. Something about, it kind of smelled like wet cardboard. Not an, just like papery. Um, I wasn't objecting to it at all. I was just like, that's unusual. But yeah, it's cinnamon nose, but wet, like length and like not sharp, but parts of cinnamon. I don't dislike that either. Again, it's missing. It's very up here, you know, like it doesn't have any, um, well, it's not aged. It's got no, none of these are going to have any kind of barrel notes. Um, there's no oak on them. It's very bright. It's spiced, but it does feel very much of the same vein as the, the Garden 108, right? Very gardeny. And, and also, again, lime, I think, is, I mean, I don't know if there's lime in it, but I'm getting lime, like lime peel, uh, lime zest, maybe. Lime, cinnamon, and cardamom. That's what I get. Let's see how it is with club soda. Three to one ratio for the club soda highball. Let's try this now with a little soda to kind of lengthen it out. It kind of disappears, this one. You get like a, an ephemeral, like an aftertaste of the cinnamon, of the spiciness. It's there. You get it. It kind of cumulative. Um, the more you sip, the more it kind of builds up enough noise in your mouth to really taste. It's like an unsweet cinnamon soda, I guess, this way. I have to say, I think that the garden had a slightly more complex evolution than the spice so far. It had a little bit more going on in it. They recommend making a mule with this, which we can do. They recommend a build with club soda and um, ginger syrup. Interesting enough, in the UK, they call it ginger nectar, apparently, or at least on this website. Maybe that's just very posh. The whole thing is very posh, too. Like, the whole launch story about his first thousand bottles being for sale at Selfridges. Like, how do you do your first anything at Selfridges? I've been there. <laughs> it's like saying, like, we launched the product at Saks Fifth Avenue. We were in Barney's before we were anywhere else. I don't know how you do that. You gotta have the right connections. Let's just leave it at that. A spear of ice goes into my highball glass. So their version with nectar is one and a half ounces of seed lip to a half an ounce of nectar, a little lime, it says, and then top it with soda. Um, top of soda is such a variable, and when I saw that, I was like, ah, this is not that specific. Uh, we can kind of wing it. I would say, you know, generally speaking, a two ounce pour of my base spirit. Yeah, that'll work out well. And maybe a twist of lime. I don't have a cutting board. You can see how well organized I am today. Happily, my whole bar is a cutting board. Let's see how this is. I wonder if I can even taste the seed lip though now. Oh yeah, you can. It's not bad. 
I mean, it's a slightly modified ginger beer and lime though. It's a ginger beer and lime with a little bit of cinnamon and gardeny aftertastes. I don't know, man. I think, <laughs> I mean, there's other cocktails on there. I did specifically gravitate towards the very simple ones for, for the purposes of this episode. Maybe some of those other ones are really scrum trelescent, but I think that for how much this stuff costs, it's tough to justify it here. It's nice. It does change the aftertaste a bit. Adds that cinnamony lingering thing. I don't know though. I just, I mean, I don't want to spoil anybody's fun here. I just feel like this is expensive stuff for a little extra aftertaste in a ginger beer. A drop of Angostura bitters that you've already got or a drop of absinthe um, would have a, you know, basically zero effect on the overall ABV and add a lot of flavor and evolution to this thing. So I don't know, it's tough to justify. I'm not opposed to it, obviously. I just, it's something to think about. I don't know if it has a place in my bar. I, I do enjoy a good ginger beer though. All right, well, let's move on to the last one. This is Grove 42. So Grove 42 has an orange on it. It is citrus forward, that's what they say. Let's give it a try. A taste of the Grove. Now this, I smell some earthy gentian type nose. This is not very good. I don't like this one. Ooh, what? Ah, I'm sorry, I don't like this one at all. I don't get any oranges in there at all, really. Maybe because there's no sugar. I guess what an orange tastes like devoid of sugar. Just dry, yeah. So dried, bitter orange peels kind of thing. Maybe it mixes well, I don't know. It's not my favorite. It's pretty, um, yeah. What is that? What do I, how do I describe that? Acrid? Maybe this is acrid? Maybe I, I would say it's acrid. It's pretty, um, I mean, it just tastes bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think that's for anybody. I don't think anybody's gonna like that. I, here's a funny thing. You can go to Club Cool, uh, or any of the places like it, but like the Epcot thing where you can drink Beverly, this, the, the aperitif that so Coca-Cola supposedly makes, and I've spoken to Italians, they're like, it doesn't exist. Nobody drinks Beverly, it's not for sale anywhere. I like Beverly, I like it a lot actually. So it's not like that I just, I mean, I, that I don't like bitter things or, I don't even know if bitter is the right word for this. I don't know, I, I don't know that this would appeal to anybody. Uh, ooh, God, it tastes like, yes, it tastes like old camping equipment. Yeah, that's what that is. Yep, like old, um, canvas and uh, ripstop with nylon and um, rubber. Oh, yeah, that's what that tastes like. Oh, there's a little citrus. Little. Oh my God, yes. It tastes like an old tent. <laughs> that's what that flavor is. Ugh. <laughs> oh man, I hate that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's drink some more of it. Uh, Let's try it on club soda. See if it wakes up a little bit. Man, whew. All right, six ounces of this, two ounces of this. Yeah, it's a Grove 42. It, it does change it a lot. I mean, it, it, it doesn't really quite taste like an old tent anymore. Yeah, I guess I would say it's very dry, mildly citrus. To be perfectly blunt, in all of these, the club soda is just as much I mean, the club soda doesn't have much of a flavor. It, I mean, really, it's more experiential. I almost think that the club soda is kind of the near dominant or equal part flavor. I mean, like, it brings a lot to the table in the case of all of these, and, and particularly this one. It's like a club soda with like a whiff of some kind of an orangey flavor. A whiff. It's pleasant. I'll tell you what else I like. A little orange bitters in club soda. Um, which may already be in your bar, and if it's not, it should be, and which is significantly cheaper and longer lasting. And the seed lip, I don't know, guys. I'm just having a hard time with this stuff. But what the heck, we can do an actual cocktail with it too. So let's do this. Uh, we take our cobbler shaker, do um, two ounces of seed lip, one tablespoon of agave nectar, and that in this particular case is um, literally just agave in the raw. It's nothing fancy. I don't use a lot of this, so. Half an ounce of lime juice. All right, 
right there. Half ounce lime juice, great. It says we should rim our glass. Sure. Um, I will do a 50% rim so that I have the option. I will serve this over a big cube, so I'll put that in the glass now. It'll be fine. It'll come down. Shaker ice in the shaker. And away we go. Just get a good seal here. And the pour. Well, let's see how that is. This is the Seed Lip Grow 42 Margarita. It's very sweet. It is tasty though. It's good. It does taste mostly like um, agave syrup and lime. Very sweet. I don't taste this at all. I'm sorry to say. Maybe a little. Yeah, you just get a little piece of this bitter orange evolution, but it actually, it just shows up for a brief moment and it is then taken over by sweet and lime. Not that great. <laughs> it's kind of missing balance in, in a way. Could I make a better version? I don't know, man. That's the thing. Is it like even lime, even sugar, like it's, it, these things are such quiet flavors. Except for the, the Garden 108. That one's got some hoof, some oomph in it. These other two are just so, meh, they kind of get lost. So I don't know, I don't know. You can tell they didn't sponsor this one. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm always honest though. I just, <laughs> they're not, probably not gonna be interested in paying me for this kind of content. So I've tried all the three seed lips today. We made a little drink with each one, nothing too fancy, because we're trying to keep this pretty honest to the root ingredients here. You got my impressions, I don't know. I think of them, the garden was the most interesting, most certainly the most pungent, the most flavorful. Is it a flavor you want? That's up to you. It's tough to say. The other two, I think, they're frankly, kind of weak. They barely show up in mixed drinks. And those are fair tests, I think, you know, because a mule, uh, gin and tonic, and, um, and a margarita, I mean, those are all, you're, you're getting stuck with some strong flavors. And the one cut through the tonic, which is... You know, it's tough. Tonic is loud. It's a big punch um, to still be able to taste something with tonic. That's it's there. You, you know, it's there. You know, it, it should show up in a ginger beer as well. It doesn't. OK, it should show up against lime and agave. It doesn't. OK, if you're looking for no ABV cocktails, this is one way to go. Um, is it the only way to go? No. Will people appreciate it? I hope so. I mean, it's certainly not a cheap way to go. It is. Um, I, I think that if you're making that kind of an offering, to somebody, uh, they should be very appreciative. Uh, would you appreciate it as a person who's making the drinks with it as a non-alcoholic, you know, no ABV thing? Maybe, maybe. I think you would like something like a bitters and soda or a homemade soft drink with some of your own like ginger syrups or something like that. I think you would like that just as much, but I can't say for you, you know, this is an issue of personal preference and taste. So I don't know. Well, that's today's episode of How to Drink. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, something very different. Don't ever usually do anything non-alcoholic. Uh, usually uh, about a couple by the time we get to this part of the episode. You know, something different. It's a new year. Trying some new stuff. Uh, trying to see if this, if you guys are interested in this sort of thing. It certainly it is interesting. And there's a lot more to explore. I've got some stuff. I think it's from Ritual. I've got Monday Gin I want to do as well. Um, We'll do some stuff with like gin alternatives, whiskey alternatives, rum alternatives. Seed lip is kind of in its own category because um, they're not trying to be an alternative to anything. They're trying to be seed lip. You'll find me on Instagram at how to drink. You'll find me on Twitter at how to drink. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. I have a Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD where I do live stuff from this bar and from my desk. I hope you will join me over there. Um, I've been doing the show for like five years, and so there's a lot of episodes, and if you want to check them out, here they are in the last 15 seconds of this episode. Excuse me. It probably would have been funny if I had like a bottle of vodka or something back here that I kept stealing a nip from, but I didn't really want to go that route on this one. I felt like that's inappropriate. Because I don't want to make fun. If you don't want an alcoholic drink, that's your, that's fine. I don't know. Then, okay, that's fine. That's your business. Well, that was weird. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> It was bizarre. <laughs>